The aim of the following video is to provide general information only on how to stay safe and live well with epilepsy. The advice contained in the video is designed to complement and not to replace the medical advice given to you by your treating doctor. As it contains general advice only, it does not take into account individual medical conditions or needs. Further clarification of your child's individual needs must be sought from your treating doctor. Sydney Children's Hospital's network does not accept any liability for any injury, loss or damage incurred by use of or reliance on the information provided in this video. Further general educational information can be found on the Paediatric Epilepsy Network New South Wales website. Living a happy and active life is good for everyone. Spending time outdoors and doing things you enjoy are important for mental health and well-being. As well as having fun, it's also important to know how to stay safe and minimise risks. For people who have seizures, extra precautions are needed to stay safe. When choosing activities, it's important to think about what you could do to reduce the risk of injuring yourself if you were to have an unexpected seizure. For example, it's always safer to wear a helmet while you're cycling. And you should always use bike paths rather than roads. Activities that involve heights or speed carry extra risks for people with epilepsy. And these are best discussed with your doctor. Water activities are extra risky for people with epilepsy. In the worst scenario, a seizure in even a small amount of water could result in drowning. It's important to know how to avoid something like that happening. You should always be closely supervised in the water by an adult who is a strong swimmer. Swimming in the outside lane of the pool can make a rescue easier if you were to have a seizure. The surf, open ocean, rivers and dams carry many more risks for people with epilepsy. Water rescues can be challenging even for trained lifeguards. Deep moving water, poor visibility and being further from shore can make rescues very difficult. It's a good idea to discuss swimming or surfing in the ocean with your doctor. When boating, paddling or fishing near any waterway, wearing a life jacket and being closely supervised by a strong adult swimmer can help keep you safe while you have fun. And taking showers rather than baths is a much safer option. Being a teenager involves lots of new experiences and challenges. For people with epilepsy, it's important to make good choices. Taking your seizure medications every day is the best way to reduce the chance of having seizures. Using a pillbox and setting medication reminders are good ways to make sure you don't forget. Getting enough sleep is also really important to reduce your chance of having seizures. Having a regular bedtime and switching off devices at least an hour before bed can help you fall asleep more easily and have a good night's rest. And catching up on missed sleep by sleeping in is never a bad idea. Drugs and alcohol don't mix well with epilepsy. Alcohol can interact with epilepsy medications in unpredictable ways and can increase the chance of seizures, especially binge drinking. Street drugs are illegal in Australia and carry even greater risks for people with epilepsy. It's best to avoid them altogether. Many people with epilepsy are able to drive. For all of us, driving carries legal responsibilities that must be taken seriously. If you have epilepsy, there are additional legal requirements and conditions you have to meet before you can obtain a special licence called a conditional driver's licence. The special legal conditions for the conditional licence indicate you must be seizure free for 12 months, be reviewed by your treating doctor at least annually, continue to take anti-epileptic medication as prescribed, ensure you have adequate sleep, and do not drive when sleep deprived, and avoid circumstances or the use of substances that are known to increase the risk of seizures. You can find further information on assessing fitness to drive on the Ostroads website.
everyone can feel down or get worried at times. If these feelings persist or start to interfere with your life, it's important to talk to someone. There are many supports available if you need them. The Penn New South Wales website has a mental health directory you can download that includes emergency contacts as well as web resources and community organisations. It may be many years before you hope to start a family, but for people with epilepsy, it's a good idea to plan ahead. The vast majority of women with epilepsy will have normal pregnancies and deliveries. It is true that women taking epilepsy medication have a somewhat higher risk of having a child with a birth defect, but this risk is overestimated. It is the epilepsy medication that is the main cause for this risk. However, we do know that some medications are fairly safe and others should be avoided. It is therefore important that you talk with your doctor early about future pregnancies and that you plan ahead. By involving your neurologist and other treating doctors early, medication can be reviewed and changed if necessary. It is important to remember that more than 95% of women with epilepsy will have healthy babies. If you do become pregnant, it's important you don't stop taking your epilepsy medication and let your doctor know straight away the medication is there to keep you and your baby safe by preventing seizures. Involving an obstetrician to closely monitor and care for you and the baby is important once you become pregnant. Some epilepsy medications lessen the effect of the oral contraceptive pill or other forms of birth control involving hormones. This can lead to pill failure, meaning you could have an unexpected pregnancy despite using contraception. Women on epilepsy medication should discuss contraception with their GP or neurologist. Some seizure medications that can interfere with the pill include Tegretol, Dilantin, Phenobarbital, Mycelin, Topamax, Trileptal and Lamictal. If you are on epilepsy medication and you are planning to use the contraceptive pill or any other form of birth control involving hormones, you should speak with your doctor. Many people love to travel. For people with epilepsy, it's important to seek medical advice before you go. Some important things to think about include ensuring you carry a medication supply for the duration of the trip, have a plan on phasing medication doses if crossing time zones, avoid sleep deprivation, especially when crossing time zones, and know how to get medical help at your destination. Towards the end of high school, teenagers are transferred from the children's hospital to the adult system. For some people, it can be hard to say goodbye. Working with your doctor to prepare for this transition over time is helpful. You can work towards a smooth transfer by understanding your epilepsy, knowing your medicines, understanding seizure risks and how to stay safe, knowing your seizure triggers, being responsible for taking your medications, understanding how adult health services work and getting to know your GP. Useful information on preparing for transition can be found on the Trapeze website. By taking some extra safety precautions, making wise choices and planning ahead, people with epilepsy can look forward to full and happy futures.